Hey what is up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Gran Turismo 7. It's that time once again where the weekly challenges go ahead and refresh. Now this week we're looking at a relatively short overall bunch of challenges, however the gain for them is actually quite decent, so instead of being very poor and a very poor reward, it's pure monetary gain, earning you over a million credits in a relatively short time. So with the intro done and out the way, let's head over and see what's on offer for this week's weekly challenges. So up first this week we have the European Sunday Cup 500. This takes place at Barcelona Catalunya National Layout. This is a very, very short two lap sprint race and is actually a rather decent earner if you're doing it over and over again in an hour. So again, not too bad here to begin with. A very short and a very easy event. Event number two is the FR American Challenge 550. This is taking place at Watkins Glen Short. It's a typical three lap sprint. Again, very short in terms of overall length and again just like the first event the pp limit isn't necessarily set in stone so you can abuse that if you want to and get these done even quicker then we have the return of one of my personal favorite special events the plymouth superbird one make this time instead of daytona we're heading over to raceway laguna seca before moving over to spa once again for the second week running this time for the wt600 in a rather forgotten event so it is quite nice to see that one return again Again, relatively short in length, being able to be completed inside 10 minutes. Then we go on to one of the shorter WTC 800 events over at Daytona Road Course to finish off for this week. So overall, we're looking at a chunk of money for a relatively short time. The rewards are going to be 100,000 for one event, 200,000 for three events, and 500,000 for five events. So again, it's quids in this week. You can't really go wrong. You're going to get these done very, very quickly overall, at least the first four events anyway, with the last event taking a little bit longer at around about 15 to 16 minutes. So event number one this week is the European Sunday Cup 500 over at Barcelona Catalunya National Layout. So again, like always, I'm going to run them on the hardest difficulty and I'm going to try and stay as close as possible to the actual PP recommendation or limit. I'm not going to go way over them. So we're jumping in the Maserati Gran Turismo S from 2008. In terms of the AI, they are very typically slow European hot hatches, especially in comparison to something like the Maserati here. So as you can see, we're going to very easily work our way through the field. Now in turn one, this is going to be probably the most difficult part of the track. If you kind of forget where you are or you just kind of zone in out and maybe listen to some music, there is a good chance that you could possibly miss the actual turning. I've done it many a times. But again, you should have the you know plenty of power and speed really to just get the overtakes done and get this event done inside two laps like i mentioned if you go on to get the clean race bonus you can get this event done very quickly with a very decent chunk of change so the bare minimum reward for this one is very fair and if you repeat it over an hour with something like the ferrari vgt in all honesty you can make a decent bit of side money that is a nice little change from the typical longer events that we see for the money grind however as you can see we got first place towards the end of the first lap meaning that we went on to take a very very easy win by around about nine seconds in the end so super simple super easy to begin with and that is going to reward us with a hundred thousand credit ticket on top of the standard payout so we've got 25,000 credits for this one without the clean race bonus add that on and you are going to be getting a Fair bit more as you can see we also got the hundred thousand credit ticket and that is going to be it for event number one so let's move on to event number two this is the american fr challenge 550 obviously aimed at american cars with an fr layout around 550 pp but that's been very very fair i think most of these cars are way under that now the typical opponents you are going to see here are classic american muscle cars so i'm going to pick something along those lines however there is one car that you may need to keep an eye out for and that is mainly the dodge viper gts from 2002 which typically leads all of these events and is typically the fastest one of the bunch that may be the only one that will give you some problems but again just like the first event the pp limit is not set in stone so if you want to go for something absolutely ridiculous like the tomahawk road car or something like that then you can pretty much do it so be sure just to use the fastest car if you want to get this one done as quickly as possible but again we're using something more in line with what the cars are on track 
which is this uh, Shelby Cobra 427 here. And again, we are still going to make relatively short work of all of them. As you can see, just slowly working our way through the grid as we crawl our way to the front. Now, there is a typical big gap between sort of the middle of the pack towards the front of the pack. As you can see here, we're overtaking P3, but then way up the road there is the front two leaders, which for me was a Dodge Challenger and the Dodge Viper, which is the one that will typically give you all that trouble if you allow it. However, we are still going to make short work of them running in the slipstream, overtaking both of them as they begin to battle away. And that means on the final lap, we had a clear run to get this event over and done with. As you can see, come the end of the event, we're around about four seconds ahead, even while kind of messing around and doing a bit of drifting. So that is going to give us tick number two for the week, and that is going to be event number two over and done with. 48,000 credits with the clean race bonus. Not too bad for a relatively short event overall. And that is going to lead us on to event number three, which is the return of this special event and the second time this one has appeared, the Plymouth Superbird One Make Race. So in terms of the first one, that was at Daytona. We're going for something a little bit different and not as, I guess, speed intensive like Daytona, which is going to be Laguna Seca, one of my personal favorite tracks, meaning we're going to have to tackle the notorious corkscrew. In terms of the overall thing, as you can see, 70,000 credits for first place that is a bare minimum the opponents are all very kind of retro styled super birds and as you can see there's nothing such as shortcut penalties mechanical damage or tire wear or fuel so this one is going to be a four lap sprint race in terms of the event and the ai themselves i think the majority of them are very close to being fully standard i don't think they have any of the engine swaps running in them or really any tuning parts so overall if you want to be a little bit kind of overkill like i am you can actually swap the super bird which i believe runs the i think the dodge charger hellcat engine i'm pretty sure that's what's in this one and in all honesty you'll absolutely walk it which is a bit of a shame because i don't actually own a second super bird without the engine swap and to be totally honest i didn't want to waste that original swap that i have in this so again very much overkill if you do want to keep it in line with the ai and make it as competitive as possible then i would fully recommend just going for a standard super bird and you'll probably have a great battle over the entire four laps however the ai especially in the super bird and a, you know typical of a lot of uh, older classic american muscle cars are very very slow there is just no other way of saying it they don't seem to be able to drive them very well as you'll notice their brake lights are always flashing on and off even in the middle of the corner again it's all about you know them trying to keep traction they're trying not to spin out so they'll basically just crawl around the entire track which is a shame because i'm assuming even in a standard superbird the most average of driver could quite easily just wipe the floor with them even on the hardest difficulty so bit of a shame there we did have an off around about the midpoint of the race as you can see we went to put the power down and uh, well that was it we lost the rear however we did already have a fairly chunky lead at that point and by the time we come across the line we're upwards of over 30 seconds ahead of second place that is going to be tick number three for the week and i am glad to see the superbird returning in what is a very weird and out there special event that i just didn't expect now, because of our off, we did lose that clean race bonus, but we took away 70,000 credits in four laps, as well as a 200,000 credit ticket on top of that. So not too bad at all. So let's move on to event number four of the week and what I feel is probably one of the more forgotten about events in the entire game. That is going to be the WT600 and for once it's not actually going to be Tokyo. So at a glance you can see that this is obviously the WTC600 at Circuit de spa Francorchamps. Now in terms of the overall layout it isn't long in length or anything like that and it does feature the typical WTC600 cars. However, unlike Tokyo, the grid is very mixed up and a lot of cars are running at completely different potential this time around. So the majority of your Tokyo grind cars should be able to work at this event. I chose my engine swapped Mazda MX-5. Now the only problem with this is it has a ton of power and is mainly for built off, you know, for kind of riding the wall at turn one in Tokyo. So again, a little bit sketchy in terms of putting the power down at somewhere like Spa, especially in the mid sector. But to be fair, if you've got a nice collection of 600 PP cars, pretty much any of them should work. However, in typical fashion of the early events of Gran Turismo 7, the grid is as spread out as it possibly can. It's absolutely ridiculous. This was a 
very, very big flaw to begin with. And whilst it has been, I guess, lessened over time, it's still very much a flaw when these early events pick up. As you can see, it was around about a 30 second gap. And even when we're getting towards fifth place, it's still over 10 seconds to the leader. It's just absolutely ridiculous how far it makes you want to chase down the rest of the AI. Now, you will probably get this done relatively easy. I know the majority of my overtaking is going to be done in the main straights, and that's really where I'm going to put all the power down before going and taking my time through the tight and twisty sections. So at Spa, you can run a relatively low downforce car, again, making up a ton of time on the straights, even if you're losing it in the mid sections, as you can see we took really you know a lot of care to try and get around that viper there that was in p2 and we still had a seven second gap with the mercedes amg running way out in front eventually we did get the overtake done on that straight once again and that put us in the lead and in a good position just to get this event done and dusted so we come through the final corner i just decided to spin up the tires and get the car across the line in probably the most ridiculous way possible that is going to be tick number four for the week and overall it's going to be a relatively decent paying event i really can't complain at 120,000 credits with the clean race bonus for an event that took me around about eight to ten minutes we also got our daily marathon reward which was kindly enough a six star roulette ticket so i don't know maybe the gran turismo gods and kazo kind of looking down on me today and saying do you know what here's a little bit of a reward so let's move in to the final event of the week. This is going to be the WTC 800, perhaps the most known category in terms of the Gran Turismo events. This one is going to be over at Daytona Road Course. It's relatively short in length and once again, just like with the WTC 600, if you've got a bunch of 800pp grind cars from Spa and uh, Sardinia, you can basically transfer them all over. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to use the Mazda 787B. If you do want this car, by the way, I will link it down below in the description, as well as the Mazda MX-5 as well. So you'll have a couple of builds to check out if you want to get these built for this event. Now, the reason I'm using the 787B is because I know this one is relatively shorter in length in comparison to some of the others. In terms of tire life and such, we're going to run the racing mediums. In terms of fuel usage, we're going to balance mainly at fuel mix 6. This is to ensure that we keep the tires as fresh as possible for as long as possible since we don't want to pit at all and also allows us to drag out that insane fuel consumption of the 787B. So again, our strategy is to basically zero stop whilst the rest of the AI will have to stop and we will basically pull out a massive gap. Now the good thing here is with a Group C legend like the 787B, we're able to drag out some insane top speed on these high bankings, so it will make short work of the AI at the best of times. Again, couple that with fuel efficiency and tyre wear, then we're basically going to be winning this one with no problems at all. It is a much easier version than what we see with the Group 1 prototype race here, which can be rather quite tricky if you're running the wrong strategy. So there we go, we're making a move for first place on lap 4. At that point, we're basically not going to see any of the AI again until the last few laps, at which point we'll Will actually be overlapping them so again we're basically going to lap the entire field inside 10 laps which is not too bad in terms of the overall strategy most of the ai will pit in between lap five and six at that point you'll just continue to stretch out that lead as you can see we're starting to lap the field so we're just going to take as much care as possible just not to absolutely whack them and give ourselves damage especially come the end of the race where as you can see our rear right tire is completely shredded so we do need to be a bit more cautious however the 787b is so easy to drive even on them worn tires we're eventually going to run out of fuel as we cross the line but that is going to give us tick number five for the week and the maximum rewards possible for this week's weekly challenges so in terms of the payout for this event, as you can see, 154,000 credits without the clean race bonus. Um, I did have a bit of an off on the grass and that just seemed to completely get away, uh, get rid of the bonus overall. So 500,000 credits as well to top it off. So let's go through the rewards for this week for the weekly challenges. First up, we have our daily marathon reward. This was a six star roulette ticket. And as you can see, this is the best possible ticket in the game, rewarding us with either very expensive cars or upwards of a million credits, which we are gonna take away here. So not too bad for around about 45 minutes work or 40 minutes work or even quicker if I'd have just kind of used very overpowered cars. We're going to take away over 2.2 million credits, which just isn't bad at all. We're also going to add on the money rewards as well, which really isn't bad for a very short amount of time. 
And that is going to complete our weekly challenges for this week. Thank you so much to all of my channel members who support this channel on a monthly basis. I couldn't be here without you guys and you guys make it feel absolutely amazing to continue making this content. Don't forget to let me know what rewards you got down below from your daily marathon and all the monetary rewards. Let me know if you think this week is any good. I would say, although it's a weaker bunch of events, the fact that they don't take too long and the fact that it is just constant money really isn't a bad thing at all so a decent week overall hopefully we get a strong week with some longer events and some better events next week and hopefully we start seeing the return of that car ticket reward thanks so much for watching i'll see you in the next one take care guys peace